Hello everyone, and today we're going to be changing out our coolant on our Nissan Frontier. And the first thing we're going to do is drain out our old coolant, flush it out with distilled water, and then add new 50-50 mix. And I'm going to show you how to do it using distilled water. So let's jump right in. And the products we're using for today, we have three gallons of 50-50 antifreeze mix, distilled water, we have our safety glasses, we have a spill-proof funnel kit, these are pretty cool to have. We're going to have our turkey baster, some needle nose pliers, a Phillips screwdriver, and then we have our 20 quart drain pan. So let's get started. And for our first step, we're gonna set the key to the on position. We're not gonna turn over the engine. We just want the key in the on position just so we could set the heater to the max setting. And we're gonna do this for about 10 seconds. The whole idea is we want the heater core to be able to be drained as well. And after we let this go for about 10 seconds, we're gonna shut it off. And before we continue on, I wanna go over one thing. First, let's focus on our first drain plug right under the front bumper. This is our drain plug for our radiator. It only requires a Phillips screwdriver, very easy to come off. This is where our, most of our process is gonna take place. However, there is another drain plug right under the air filter. So let me go ahead and get this off so I can show you. And taking the air filter off is very easy, but I need to do it just so I can get the camera in there. So let me get this out. Come on, there we go. And I'll bring my camera down here. This is gonna get a little bit dark, but we're gonna be able to see once I stop the camera. And let's go down a little further. And we're gonna stop it right there. So there's the other drain plug. This one's for the engine block itself. We're not going to really touch this one today. The juice is not worth the squeeze regarding taking this one off. But I want to let you know it is there. So moving on, let's put our drain pan right next to our passenger wheel. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the cap for the reservoir tank. And let me bring the camera in there and see, check our level. And it looks about where it's supposed to be. Now we're going to need to drain this out. It's a little dirty, but it's not too bad. So let's go ahead and focus on this one hose right here. This is our bypass hose. And by grabbing some needle nose pliers, we can go remove this clamp because once we take this hose off and drop it below the water level, we can go ahead and drain all the water out of this reservoir without unbolting the reservoir. So let me pull that off. There we go. And I'm going to bring it right below the water level and it'll start draining out. That's exactly what we want. And that's why I kind of put the drain pan right under it. And we'll go ahead and let that drain out completely. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now let's take a look inside our tank. Yep, the level looks exactly where it's supposed to be. It's at the bottom. Now, if you want, you can put a little water in there just to drain out some more. If the water doesn't start draining on its own, take a turkey baster and go ahead and start the suction while it's below that tank level and it should start draining. And then we'll go ahead and take a paper towel and clean up the area. The whole idea is you don't want any coolant on your paint or the belts. It's not very good for those surfaces. And with everything cleaned up, let's go ahead and reconnect the heater bypass hose. So go ahead and push the hose right back on there. And let me put, see if I can do it around the camera. Come on. Uh, there we go. And then take our needle nose pliers and put the clamp back in the exact same position. And there we go. Looks good, nice and sturdy. And just because I wanna do our due diligence, let's go one more time with a paper towel and make sure there's no coolant left behind. And now we can move on to the radiator. Let's go ahead and start with the cap. So I put my hand on it just to make sure it's cool. You don't ever wanna take a radiator cap off when the engine is hot. So now that we did that, let's go ahead and set that aside. Then let's go ahead and move our drain pan right under that drain plug that I showed you earlier and then take your Phillips screwdriver, and let's go ahead and remove that drain plug. This should not be on there that tight, so it should just require a few easy turns, and it should come out fairly easy. So let's see if I can do it without making too much mess. There we go. Now, we are missing the washer off of this, but we'll get that later after it drains. Then, of course, let me go ahead and take a sample. 20 minutes later. And after about 20 minutes, it does start draining out. So we'll go ahead and put the washer back on your drain plug, and let's go ahead and reinstall our drain plug and just make it nice and snug. And let's take a look at our drain pan. So let's see, we have 20 quarts right there, then 15, then 10, and it's a little bit above the five line. So we got about seven quarts in the container. That's not bad. And then we'll go ahead and grab some distilled water. You wanna use distilled water, you don't wanna use hard water or tap water. And we're gonna refill our reservoir tank to the max line. The whole system takes two and a half gallons, so we're gonna put it back up to that two and a half gallon mark. Now that we finished that, let's go ahead and leave the cap off the reservoir tank, and now let's focus on the radiator itself. So let me get my camera in position. There we go. Now let's go ahead and grab that funnel kit, and let's go ahead and install this nice green cap that came with it. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that up. There we go. And install our funnel, and this presses right on. It's really cool. And then we can grab our distilled water and go ahead and refill the radiator. And this is a pretty simple process. You just keep adding water until no more air bubbles are present. And once we believe it's full, put the cap on the funnel and take the funnel right off. 
And that looks pretty good. And now we can remove our funnel cap. And that twists right off just the same way it came on. Take the insert out with it. Set that aside. And then go ahead and reinstall your radiator cap. And now we can go ahead and start the engine so we can warm it up. The whole idea is we want to get to normal operating temperatures, which is about a third of the way up on this gauge. And this can take about 10 minutes. And with the engine warmed up, let's go ahead and press the accelerator three times. So there's one. Let's do another one. So there's two. And we're going to go ahead and do one more. And there's three. And by performing that step, we're able to circulate all that distilled water. That way it'll help us flush out the system. And let me go ahead and check on the heat. Yep, it, this thing is blowing hot air. That's good. Let's go ahead and turn off the engine. Eventually. And after the engine is cooled down and the radiator cap is actually cool to the touch. Yep, eh, it feels pretty good. That's a good sign. We can go ahead and remove our radiator cap. And very good. Awesome. And we'll set that aside. And now let's go ahead and drain our reservoir one more time. And we'll go ahead and do the same process as earlier. And reconnect our bypass hose. Move the drain pan right back to the radiator. And let's go ahead and remove the radiator drain plug one more time. And it should be just as easy. Hopefully we don't make too much of a mess. And if you look at the coolant, it looks pretty clear. That's actually a good sign. Let's go ahead and collect a sample. And there we go. And after about 20 minutes, we can install our new drain plug. Now the old one looks in good shape, but we did buy a new one for the washer. That's the part you're supposed to change out. So we'll go ahead and start by finger tightening it and then tighten this down. And it's supposed to be tightened at 11 inch pounds, but we're going to do this by hand. So until it's snug. Now let's work our way back to the top of the radiator and install that adapter for the funnel system. And the same thing as earlier, use the green cap and we're going to tighten it down. Nice and snug. Place the funnel in there and push that down as well. Nice and tight. And now we can go ahead and start refilling our system with our 50-50 mix. And now the whole idea is we want to go ahead and do the same steps as earlier. Keep filling it until you see no more air bubbles. And now let's go ahead and cap off our funnel. That way we can take our funnel off without making too much of a mess. Looks good. And now let's work our way down to the reservoir tank and do the same steps. And we're going to go ahead and fill this to the max line. And then once that's done, we'll go take our funnel off and we'll reinstall it back on the radiator. This allows us to go ahead and top off the radiator a little bit more, and you're going to need it for this next step anyway. And with that extra coolant left in the funnel, let's go ahead and warm up the engine, and let's go ahead and make sure our heater is still on. Yep, looks good. And we'll go ahead and play the waiting game and let the vehicle warm up. And while the engine's running, let's go ahead and squeeze the upper radiator hose, see if we can burp it a little bit. The whole idea is we want to remove any air bubbles out of the system, and you can see a few come out of the funnel. That's a good sign. And after about 20 minutes, we shut off the engine, and there's no more air bubbles coming out of the funnel. That's a good sign. And now we can go ahead and remove our funnel and remove our adapter cap. And there's our insert. There we go. And then we went ahead and topped off all the coolant in the radiator and installed that cap, and then topped off the reservoir as well and installed this cap as well. And we'll make sure it's nice and tight, and we're almost done. And now that the hard parts are done, let's go for a test drive. The whole idea is we're going to go drive around for about 15 to 20 minutes, and we're going to keep an eye on our temperature gauge. So right now, it stayed about a third of the way up. That's a great sign. Throughout the whole drive, we did not see it climb at all. That means we pretty much got all the air bubbles out. Two hours later. And after letting the truck sit, we went ahead and checked for leaks and make sure everything is still topped off. So the radiator looks pretty good. The color looks pretty good as well. So we'll put that cap back on. Or at least try. There we go. Then we'll take a look at the reservoir, see if I can get this cap off. And we're going to take a look inside just to make sure the level looks like where it's supposed to be. And now you can barely see it with the camera, but that looks pretty good. And after a few days of driving, I want to do a quick test. So this is after work, so I want to make sure it's nice and cool before I take this cap off. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And let me go ahead and grab my tester. Now this is a coolant tester. This is actually a pretty cool thing to have. It's very cheap and very easy to use. So I'll show you. Squeeze on the top bubble. Put the hose in your reservoir, and we're going to suck up some coolant. And see if we can get it to the top. And then I'm going to take this tester out. Let me see it take the hose out making a mess. And let's pinch this hose. 
And I'll try to bring this a little closer to the camera. That way you can see what I'm seeing. And it's got a little bit of air bubbles in there. Let me tap those. Now, if we zoom in right here where my finger's at, you can see we're at negative 29 degrees Celsius, negative 20. You usually want negative 35, negative 30. That means you're at 50-50. This is still pretty good. We're actually not 50-50. We're more like 45-55 which is still pretty good in this case, especially in the environment we're in right now. Now flip it over, and we're gonna zoom into the hot side or the boiling point, and this also looks pretty good. The recommended value is 129. We're about at 128 and a half, so that's really good. So our mix is not bad at all. And with those results being satisfactory, let's go and return the coolant back to the reservoir and get all of it out, and then we'll go ahead and reinstall our cap, and that should leave us in a good position for our mix. So that's a good sign. Awesome. And for our very last step, all we have to do is dispose of our old antifreeze. And I'm going to use the same containers I used to fill the system. And by using that funnel that came with the kit, it made this job very easy to do it without making too much of a mess. And let's put the cap on that, so that's one bottle down. And once I filled all the containers, I went ahead and drove to my local recycling center, and I was able to go ahead and hand over my old antifreeze. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.